Um, we're going straight on to hear um, about uh, experience from evaluation, um, and it's a pleasure to introduce uh, Judith Smith from the uh, Nuffield Trust, who's the Director of uh, Policy. Um, I think you've got a biography in your pack. I won't waste time by reading out. Judith. Thank you, Nigel, and thank you, everyone, for inviting me here today to uh, be part of, of your summit. Yes, I'm, I'm from the Nuffield Trust. We're an independent charitable health research foundation. And the reason I'm here today is that together with colleagues from Imperial College, we undertook uh, a one-year evaluation, indeed, of the first year of what was the inner North West London integrated care pilot. And I think it's very helpful that today you, you're taking a little bit of time to reflect on that pilot and its evaluation. And I've pulled out some uh, learning both from the evaluation findings but also about the process of evaluation, which I hope will be helpful to your discussions and uh, thoughts about uh, how you're going to, to move forward in the way that uh, Phil and Thurza were talking about just now. So just what I'm going to cover very briefly, a little bit about what the Inner North West uh, London Integrate, uh, Great, Greater Care Pilot was, how it was evaluated, uh, what was uh, revealed from that evaluation, and the sort of lessons as we stand back that I think we can, can take from that. And then just one very final slide where I'll just tell you a little bit about the, the, in a sense, the new evaluation the, that's uh, being commissioned uh, in respect of the whole systems integrated uh, care programme, if I've got that title right. So, um, do you know, my very focus just can't cope with reading that. I'm going to have to use my paper version here, so it's a sign of ageing, I'm afraid. Um, the the uh, Inner North West London uh, Integrated Care Pilot, it was a large uh, scale programme, very much about improving the coordination of care for older people, for people over 75 years of age, and for adults living with diabetes. And as you can see there, it sought to improve people's outcomes, to uh, uh, create access to better coordinated care, particularly outside hospital, but also to reduce un what, uh, unnecessary hospital admissions and to enable more effective working across different health and, and social care professionals. The pilot started in July uh, 2011 and it uh, ended almost two years later in March 2013. See, a, a lot of money was invested by NHS London, some 10 million pounds, and you can see there it involved uh, quite a significant number of organizations. May not feel so significant when we consider how many are involved in the current program, but there you can see five local authorities, three hospitals, 104 general practices, and, and so on. Um, and importantly, representatives from the third sector, particularly Age UK and Diabetes UK, and was covering just over half a million patients. Now, I've brought together on this slide here that the main features of the Inner North West London pilot, and I've categorised them according to what are five common barriers to integrated care that occur time and again in the literature and in the evidence. So, for example, the importance of joint governance to guide these sorts of initiatives. Well, in the, uh, the previous pilot, there was an integrated management board that involved a whole range of quite senior managerial and clinical and lay stakeholders that came together on a monthly basis that was an important part of steering and enabling the work of the pilot change in terms of culture. I think for us one of the particularly striking things about the pilot was the setting up of multidisciplinary team or group meetings uh, in the community setting for health and social care practitioners where they were uh, looking to uh, find their highest risk patients, to review their care, to plan what to do next. And indeed, the next point about patient or user involvement, that care planning for me was at the heart of, of that pilot, really trying to be more systematic and also to take more time with patients, the, the older people and people with diabetes, 
to, to plan in a, quite a shared, almost coaching uh, sort of way how their, their care and services were going to go forward. Information sharing and shared records time and again comes out of studies of, of coordinated care as being important. A lot of effort was put in in the inner northwest London pilot to develop a, a tool, an IT tool, to enable this. Um, I'll come back to that uh, in a moment. And finally, the issue of, of having incentives that support all of this, aligned incentives, as it's often referred to. And again, in the, in the pilot, there were significant efforts put into things like the voting rights of people within the pilot to make sure there was sort of equity of those. But also there was funding to support the local multidisciplinary groups in, uh, in, in developing further out of hospital care and arrangements in place to share any uh, gains that, uh, financial gains that were made from the work. So how was the pilot evaluated? The evaluation uh, was, was uh, actually just less than a year, the period of time, as you can see there. And there were four strands shared between the Nuffield Trust and Imperial, and you can see there they included the strategic information, uh, implementation, so what was actually sort of happening to set it up, attempts to assess patient and indeed professional experience, work analysing service use and costs, and some um, work that was trying to at least establish some indicators in terms of impact on health outcomes. What did it reveal? Just a couple of slides drawing together the findings of the evaluation. And there's much more, in fact, in the, there's this report available on the Nuffield Trust website alongside the detailed uh, papers from each of those four strands of the evaluation where you want to sort of delve down and find out more about how we reach these conclusions. We concluded that um, considerable progress had been made in really formalising engagement in a relatively short space of time, getting the whole thing up and running, the governance and other arrangements I've referred to. The financial support from NHS London was clearly very important in enabling the development of uh, the IT tool, significant project management being in place, and coordination of what was happening and setting up the multidisciplinary groups, enabling people to have the time to do the care planning work. But this raised, uh, and it was one of the key things we, in a sense, we, we said at the end of the evaluation, what's going to happen in the longer term? Can this be sustained and, uh, and taken forward? When actually things tend to get harder in the second, third and fourth year of these sort of initiatives than, than at the start. We found that healthcare professionals had a high level of commitment to the pilot and indeed to the care planning uh, approach and that collaboration was reported to be improving across the different uh, organisations and professionals. When it came to some of the hard quantitative data, we didn't find evidence of a significant reduction in emergency admissions for patients in the pilot. But bear in mind, we were being asked to evaluate in less than a year of a major uh, development and uh, uh, that there were actual methodological uh, issues as to, to why that was probably difficult and indeed not, not surprising in terms of seeking those results at such an early stage. We, we did identify a significant increase in diagnoses by GPs, of uh, people with dementia, and of that being recorded in care plans and indeed increased frequency of testing for diabetes. Now, in, the, in terms of the patient experience, some of the people who were spoken to reported improved access to services and less time spent repeating their history to different uh, professionals. Uh, others, however, reported no change to their care. Now, the IT tool, concerns were expressed uh, about that and about its functionality. There have been problems in... Uh, making that work in the way that it was intended. So as we uh, concluded this, uh, the, the evaluation of the first year, we were saying that actually we felt the pilot had made a good start in terms of its setup, its governance, and imp implementing a care planning approach. But we felt that a significant challenge lay ahead in terms of really embedding and sustaining changed ways of working and being able to demonstrate some outcomes. So as we... Sort of, as I draw to the conclusion of what I've got to say, just to reflect on that, well, the, the Inner North West London pilot, it was a very ambitious change programme, and it was being implemented as well against a background of significant NHS reform and change, as, as you all know. 
So substantial progress was clearly made in designing and implement, implementing what was actually quite a complex uh, intervention. When you think of the, the IT and information sharing, the desire for a different approach to care planning, getting professionals to work in some quite different ways. And it was you know, really trying to bring together those providers uh, I say, in some, some often new uh, ways. It was in the early stages of change when we were asked to uh, study this. And it really was, I think, too early to demonstrate benefits uh, to service use and patient outcomes. And it's really important, and I know James is going to say some more about this in a wee while, but uh, international evidence of these sort of efforts at, at, at integration or better care coordination at scale, they suggest it's a minimum of three to five years before you're going to see a real impact in terms of activity, patient experience and outcomes. So what lessons uh, can we uh, draw from the evaluation? These build on, uh, some of you uh, were in this building back in June, I know, thinking about your pioneer application. I spoke then about evaluation. And these are the, the similar lessons, slightly developed because my thinking's moved on a little bit. Um, but first of all, it's really important to spend lots of time at the early stages of this sort of programme working out what it is you really want to do. What is it that you're trying to achieve? And to do that really from the user's and the carer's perspective. Secondly, to assume this is for the long haul. This isn't one year or two years. This is five to ten years if you're going to really make uh, this sort of significant and profound change. And so taking time to specify very clearly your objectives and what the interventions are and then to review them regularly is really important because some things you may decide to ditch that you were going to do, some may need rolling out more quickly. You need to keep going back to that. Thirdly, the need to manage implementation really closely and invest more resource as time goes on. Too often in NHS and indeed often perhaps local government change, we put so much money into startup and sort of all the initial design and that tails off, that tapers off. I could slightly challenge me argue that perhaps happened with the inner North West London pilot, you know, that how do we actually sustain it? I say when it gets tougher in years two, three and four, when we really want that clinical service change to be happening. Fourth, be explicit about the desired outcomes and the markers you're using to assess progress and report those as you go and again refine if you need to. Consider what's called in academic terms formative evaluation, where your evaluators are working closely alongside you to help shape or challenge the objectives and what's coming up with the interventions and to be feeding back regularly and again helping to I guess correct as you go along and finally and my final point to you this morning is that ambition is critical and that's so striking here in northwest London one of my team said to me yesterday she knew who worked on the previous evaluation she knew I was coming here she said Judith there's something about northwest London you've got to hand it to them the ambition and commitment she was warning me about not being too miserable in this presentation, I think. So, but there's a very serious point there. So the ambition is critical, but it is, it, I would still argue that it's better to under-promise and over-deliver. The very final slide here is just to let you know what's happening about the evaluation going forward now of the, uh, the whole systems integration programme. Um, North West London is, as has been mentioned already, one of the national integrated care pioneers. That's been evaluated by the Policy Innovation Research Unit, which is led by the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. Now, the Nuffield Trust and LSE are part of that national pioneer evaluation, because we're part of that uh, research unit there. Um, but we have, in addition, been commissioned to undertake a more in-depth study of the work that's being taken forward here in North West London. So phase one of that is over 15 months, which literally starts now this month through to next year's Easter. Uh, and you can see it is a formative uh, study and we'll be very much concentrating on how objectives are developed and set, uh, how you clarify your interventions. We're studying the process of co-design, tracking the early implementation of different service initiatives that you make. And we'll be feeding back regularly, and I guess to many of you in this room, in different workshops and events over, over the coming year. And um, part of our brief is to indeed then end by scoping a longer term evaluation that can really start tracking at a more granular level what's happening 
to services in terms of, again, activity, cost and outcomes. I hope that's been helpful in terms of a, a little bit of a reflection on what's happened before and our interpretation of that and uh, that the, uh, the lessons that I set out uh, that certainly felt important to us are of some help to you as you undertake this ambitious and incredibly important work moving forward. Thank you.